Yo! Cowabunga, internet! Welcome to Bricks and Beer, episode 17. Fuck, it's the 17th one. There's a lot. There's a lot of episodes. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I can't believe anybody still watches this shit. Um, and there are a lot of you. There's 164 of you subscribed right now. So that makes me feel good and weird. Um, so yeah, fucking A. Keep watching. If you want to watch the other ones, like always, you can click a base plate. I'm going to try not to move this too much. It's a tiny base plate. It's going to be a tiny annotation. Kind of over the annotations at this point. Uh, this is a medium azure base plate, I think. Um, it's not even a plate. Well, I guess it's a plate. It's not a, a traditional tubeless base plate. So it's a big plate. So I don't even know if you could really count this as a base plate. It's just a big plate. Anyway, enough about semantics and base plates. Uh, what are we going to talk about today? We're, we're going to kind of take this one in a, a little bit of a different direction than most of these. Um, it won't be quite 100% Lego focused. Uh, we'll talk about the beer, I guess, first and foremost. Um, and then you'll figure out why I bought this beer. So I bought this beer on the way home today. Uh, it's like Sunday, middle of the day. We rode our bikes to breakfast. And then afterwards, I stopped at a place because I was like, I don't have any new beers to talk about on the podcast. I'll get something. So this is the Mondo's Blonde Ale. Uh, I've never had this. Um, I got it because it says Mondo. It's made in Ventura. It's a blonde ale. Supposedly it has corn in it. It's made by a surf brewery. So we'll see how this is. You guys tell me what you're drinking. Hopefully it's uh, good or better than this. Oh, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Can't really taste the corn, and I think that's okay. Um, so today we're going to talk about something that uh, has been with me for a long time. It's kind of a weird thing. Like, the Lego has always been there. So have the turtles. Fucking Ninja Turtles, right? Right? Yeah, okay. Hopefully you guys like Ninja Turtles. If you don't, just fucking skip this episode, because that's all I'm going to talk about this entire time. If you do like Ninja Turtles, this might be interesting for you. Uh, quick side note, so I told you I'd never drank this beer before. You did notice me pour some of it in the small taster glass. That's because my wife wants to try the beer as well, and I will drink all of it if I don't separate out some for her. Um, so that's it, you know, beer, turtles. I guess that's kind of related, not really. So the Ninja Turtles, they've been around forever. Um, I, like most children of the 80s, you know, I'm in my early 30s, so I was the prime audience to grow up on this. This is straight up the cartoon Ninja Turtles. I think that's the way most people associate and know the Ninja Turtles. Um, they made the movies. The movies were okay. The first one's actually, like, really good. And then the second and the third ones suck way more. Um, two reasons. One, they sort of, like, followed the OG plot origin of the, the Ninja Turtles in the first one. And then, I guess the MPAA and the studios were like, it's way too fucking violent. All these moms are yelling. Um, so they made the second and the third one, like, really, really dumb. There's a, there's a moment where, like, Leonardo sticks his swords into the ceiling and then, like, bicycle kicks a guy instead of just cutting him in half, which is what he should be doing. Um, and that was, like, the, the weird, like, 90s, like, parental craziness. Uh, I, I distinctly remember, like, people yelling about, like, Bart Simpson was going to destroy morality of American children. And then I remember specifically being told by my mom, who, like, bought into the hype about, like, don't go in the sewers. The Ninja Turtles aren't real. Um, so kids, stay out of the fucking sewers. Uh, so anyway, I, I had, like, you know, the typical OG cartoon, you know, purple, red, orange, blue, Ninja Turtles experience. Um, up until I was about 12, I want to say I was pretty early, maybe even younger than that, maybe I was like 8. Um, so I bought this book at CVS. This is the first Ninja Turtles graphic novel. This is the original Eastman Laird book. This is uh, from fucking 1987, I think. And um, this book is incredible. I think I bought this for like 10 bucks at Save On. And it's thick. This was my first graphic novel of all time. And I remember buying this because I liked Ninja Turtles and I liked comic books. And I was, like, mildly aware. But, like, this fucking art is so rad. And this is, this is the real Ninja Turtles, right? So this is what everybody knows. 
This is the real shit. There's no different colored headbands. They're all red headbands. They actually use their weapons. It's crazy violent. Um, in this first book, I'll have to show you some of the art, because I, I feel like the art in this is incredible. But uh, they face down Shredder. So, like, here's the classic. I'll try not glare for you guys. Shredder. Like, how fucking badass is he? And he's got his, you know, ninja foot clan, who's awesome. And all of this relates to Daredevil. Um, they were kind of spoofing a little bit on Daredevil, which I didn't know at the time, up until, like, a month ago. But, like, look at these, this gorgeous splash page of art. Big battle scene between them and all the ninjas and shit. And then, like, immediately they fucking fight Shredder. And, uh, you know, I'll just spoil it for you because, fucking, this is such a good comic. You should go out there and read it. They fucking kill Shredder in this book. Like, the next page, I won't even show it to you, but the next page in this book, the fucking kill Shredder, and I was like, holy fuck, like, this is not the Ninja Turtles that you know. This is fucking, like, killing motherfuckers, real ninjas, with bladed weapons shit. Um, it's incredible. The art's awesome, the story's rad, like, there's real stakes involved. The second story in this, after they kill Shredder, is the Baxter Stockman Mouser story, where uh, the Mousers, you know, try to eat mice and they eat everything. And um, it's great. It's like fucking phenomenal. It, you could find this on eBay or some other places, and you should. Like, if you like the Ninja Turtles and you haven't read the original OG shit, even if you like it for the goofy aspect, like, they still kind of have some of the goofy humor things, but then it's like more serious. Like, people bleed and whatnot. There's there's real stakes, um, which is rad. It's great. So fucking keep going. So anyway, oh, that's awful. I just showed you some... Oh, that's not a price tag. That's just a random barcode. Anyway, so um, following up on that, at the same save-on, for also $9.95, I bought this. This is book two. Uh, this is my favorite fucking comic book of all time. Period. This has the best art, including Akira and all the Marvel Universe and, like, all of that. This, to me, is fucking incredible. There's a, there's a couple of things that happen in this. Um, they meet the Triceratons. They go to a, a different dimension through TCRI's crazy portal thing. So there's a lot of space artwork, and me being a space dude, obviously, is great. So, like, here's, like, a little science colony thing. Look how fucking awesome that is. Um, and then there's the Triceratons, who are dinosaur people. And they're, like, mean dinosaur people. Like, they're, they're pretty brutal. And um, there's, like, the greatest space station shit ever in here. This was really, really influential on me in a bunch of different ways. Like, I tried to build a small asteroid thing. Um, when I first met Fredel, like, one of the first things the homie Fredel did was give me a small band of brown Lego, because I had, like next to no brown lego and he was like yo dude i got you community hero fray dog um and i built a little asteroid thing which i guess i'll throw a link up uh over there um which was kind of mimicking this it was micro scale it wasn't nearly as cool um and then i did the big iron builder nan and killer thing um which is inspired by this so this is uh the next book in the or the next issue in the same book and um, at this point, they're in space, and they're in this crazy floating city thing, and it's flying through the air, and then they dock with bigger ones. And this page, this spread, sorry, the glare is fucking killer. It's daytime right now, so this doesn't help. Um, there you go. You can kind of see. This is fucking incredible, right? Like, god damn, this is so awesome. Like, when people ask you the question, like, because we bullshit at conventions and stuff and people are like what's the best thing if you had unlimited resources and time and whatever i would build this this fucking page and i would make it gigantic and it would be amazing and it would be rad and um all of it would be minifig scale so it would be bigger than my apartment complex anyway um this is a fucking great book right so i got this book and i got this book when i was you know 10 years old let's say and i read these and this one ends on a cliffhanger, and I fucking just never got the third one for some reason. Um, so, I, you know, whatever, life happens. I guess I was, like, moving and becoming a teenager and shit. So moving on. Um, you know, adulthood kind of happens. Shit happens. I read other things. Um, they 
reboot the Ninja Turtles cartoon, like fucking new movies come out, all this shit. But prior to the new movie coming out, um, I don't even know when this was. This was, fuck, four years ago, five years ago, the NECA Ninja Turtles came out. So I bought this dude. This is my, one, Raphael is my favorite Ninja Turtle because he's the hothead and the brash one. And he's also like, there's a, there's a fucking line in this that just made me love Raph where like the blades all come out and Leonardo talks about like Raph lives for this shit. And it, it's like the most badass thing. And Raph is always the one that's like fucking just going ape shit. So this is a perfect representation essentially of these OG ones. Um, and like, you know, I had the, the original Ninja Turtle figures when I was a kid and they're all gone through the great purge of shit. And um, I was like, fuck, this is so good. And I remember when these came out, I wasn't buying a lot of toys besides, you know, the obvious. Um, because the obvious. So it, it has to be something kind of really cool to push me into, okay, I'll buy this and then I'll have to store it somewhere or display it. And I don't have enough room to store or display all of this nonsense behind me. Um, so I only bought one. And the funny story about this is, I was at the Santa Monica Promenade with my, my wife, I think at the time, probably my fiancé, and um, we were at like a, a bar there eating dinner with some friends of hers, and across the street happens to be Puzzle Zoo, and Puzzle Zoo is a really, really cool toy store. Um, kind of suck for Lego. Like, buying Lego at retail, it's like you either go to the Lego store, or you're getting mad deals, or else it just sucks. It's like mediocre. But if you're trying to find other toys, going to places like Puzzle Zoo for shit like this, perfect. Perfect. Right? So I go to Puzzle Zoo. Um, we're actually at dinner, and I'm like, hey, I'm just going to run across the street while we wait for our food to come so I could just go check out this toy thing. And, like, you know, I'll try to, try to fucking just weasel my way to get a toy and then fucking come back. So I go across the street. There's a case of these Ninja Turtles sitting on the floor, and there's a couple on the pegs, and I... Grab one eye, look at the pegs, and the pegs have Donnie, and they have Mikey, and I'm like, ah, maybe I'll pick up Donnie, but I really want Raph. Like, I'm going to buy one of these, I want Raph. So I open this case. It's a full fucking brand new case. I pull out this Raph, and then out of nowhere, the ultimate in, like, comic book guy, neck beard, terrible nerd dude shows up, and he's like, hey, hey, those are mine. And I was like, oh, are you going to buy all of these? And he was like, no, but I, the only reason they're here is because of me. And I was like, okay, so if you're not going to buy these, I'm just going to buy this one. And he's like, well, I, I have to go through them first. And I was like, okay, so do you want to just look at this one? And, and then you, we can be done because I'm just going to buy the one. He's like, yeah, well, it's just, you know, I'm, I'm the reason. And I was like, are you getting heated? Are you going to, like, are we going to have a fight in a toy store over a Ninja Turtle? And he was like, well, I'm, I'm not the one saying anything. And then I was like, okay, dude. And I fucking took my Ninja Turtle and I walked to the counter and I bought my Ninja Turtle and I walked back across the street with my like bag of shame. Cause you know, you're trying to be an adult. Like, this is one of those like adult things that I shouldn't be like geeking out and running across the street to go fucking buy toys. And I'm always like, oh, what'd you get? And I was like, oh, I got this fucking Ninja Turtle. But I almost had to fight a dude for it. And that was really weird. And then of course all of her friends want to know the story and shit. So um, I, I really like this figure. It's great. It's articulated well. Um, the hands can hold the size in the cool, stabby, psi mode move. And, um, it's fucking perfect. I've thought about buying the other ones since then, but I probably won't have to fight anybody for them, so... They're probably not as cool as this one. Um, so anyway, this is my Raphael. He's cool. He's from NECA. That happens. That's like a couple years back. Um, like I said, like four or five years ago, whatever. It was just kind of a funny story. And so, you know, I bought that one figure, and it's been in my office, and nothing really happened Ninja Turtles-wise for a while. Until, and I always go back to this shit. Like, these two books I go back to all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, I have the internet. I'm an adult. What the fuck happened at the end of book two? That's right. Bought book three. You can tell... Book three. I bought this used. This was still $9.99. I did not buy this for $9.99. This one, and uh, I do kind of want to find out when these were actually published. Uh, first printing, 86. 
1986, well-loved. You can see how beat up and abused these are. Almost brand new. Uh, so these are kind of night and day. So biggest cliffhanger of all time, resolved. Kind of lame. Not not cool at all. I thought they were going to be in space. I thought the Triceratons were going to fucking do all this shit. I They just go back to Earth in the first page. That's like Because at the end of 2, they're in the thing, and you're like, oh, where are they going to go? They just go back to Earth, which is lame. Um, and the Triceratons follow them, and the fucking TCRI guys who are there, who are cool, because, you know, they're like the Krang brain dudes. And by, like, page 18, all of the stakes in this are sort of done. It's like they're just back. And then by page 38, the entire thing is wrapped up. Um, and essentially, it just works out toward, like, they kill all of the Triceratons. And the TCRI guys, see the little brain dudes, they're like, oh, yeah, here's the whole explanation about fucking air and dimensional travel. And uh, we'll send you back. And then fucking, there they are with Splinter. And they're like, yo, we have a crazy story. And that's it. And then it just goes on to this Cerebus, the aardvark story. Like this chick. And I'm not into Cerebus. Like you can see Cerebus or whatever this dude's name is. It's just weird. And I know that sounds weird because I'm talking about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles traveling through space and meeting dinosaur aliens and Fugitoid the robot. I don't know. I just, this, I don't know. This, this did not do it as much as these did for me. So that's sort of the history of Ninja Turtles until recently. Um, and I, this is what kind of why I wanted to do this. And I am going to talk about some Lego. There is some Lego at the back end of this. It all relates. It's all going to make sense if you just stay with me. Um, so I, it's one of those things that it just comes back. And it's like I cycle through things and obsessions and, you know, what I'm into and it's, it's one of the perennial things. So, this Halloween, fairly recently ago, uh, my wife was like, yo, uh, me and your brother-in-law and his girlfriend are all going to go out on Saturday for Halloween. We should get a costume. There's four of us. She wanted to be Domino's. Nobody wants to be Domino's. Domino's are lame. Um, and I'm like, dude, there's four of us. Let's just be the fucking Ninja Turtles. And she's like, well... How do we do that? And I'm like, dude, it's so easy. It's so easy. And she's like, well, I, I, okay, well, you'll be, you'll be in charge. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. So I'm just like, uh, all we need is green shirts. Just get four green shirts. I'll take care of the rest. So she bought these, which it's cool. It's got the Ninja Turtles on it. So it's fairly obvious that it's Ninja Turtle, but it doesn't really look like a Ninja Turtle costume. Um, but I was like, well, you know, whatever, fuck it. It's fine. Like, we'll make some costumes. That same day, that morning, um, it's Saturday morning, I recorded the Halloween one the night before, drove down, get to San Diego, go do lunch with my mom, because my mom has to go show me her art piece at uh, some women's museum in San Diego, in Liberty Station, right? Not 100% thrilled to go do this. My mom's a talented artist, it's just old lady art, it's different, it's, everybody has different tastes, it's not really for me. But I'm a good son, so I'm like, yeah, cool, Mom, I'll go see your shit, let's go do it. And we go eat lunch, and lunch is cool, and then we go to this place, and where this museum, this women's museum is, is in Liberty Station, and there's a shit ton of stuff there. There's all these other museums, including the San Diego Comic Art Gallery Museum, which, that day, they happen to have a gigantic Halloween show. So there was, like, DJs and kids in costume, and, like, all this fucking crazy shit running around, and, like, that... Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters is parked out front, and, like, it's, like, little fucking surprise Ninja Turtle Comic Con deal, right? So they have a museum there, and we go see my mom's stuff, and it's great. And I'm like, yeah, mom, that's great. Let's go just check out whatever's going on over here. And we go into this uh, comics museum, and lo and behold, fucking Peter Laird is there. And they have, and I'm going to do the thing where I show you the thing on the phone, and this is awful. Oh, that's full of glare. Oh, yeah, that doesn't work at all. Well, maybe you can see. So imagine that there's some photos of some drawings. What those drawings are is the fucking original pencils and inks for this spread, which is amazing. So it's, it's this, like, four pages. Well, maybe it's not that one, but it's definitely this one. This 
I have looked at since I was eight years old, countless times. This has the Triceratons uh, in their full space battle dress. Like, check out this dude stealing Fugitoid. Fugitoid's a professor trapped in a robot's body. It's fucking badass. And I just stumbled into an art gallery that had these. And I was like, holy fuck, this is perfect. And I'm going to go home after this and make some fucking Ninja Turtle costumes. So uh, we dressed up as the Ninja Turtles. The costumes were okay. They were all right. We, uh, we did the, the whole face mask. We wore the shirts. We went and ate pizza. Here's a photo of my brother and I eating pizza. Um, Brother-in-law, as you can tell, we're not exactly related. Um, and we got all the shit. But what you can't really see in this, this is on our backs. And these are awesome. These are fucking rad. Um, super easy. I've always liked making costumes out of cardboard because it's like somewhat disposable and you don't really have to give a shit about it. And when there's four of you and you're wearing these and you're in a crowded bar, you can kind of just huddle together and form a shield because this is like a big ass thing that you're wearing on your back that you can just smash into people. It's fucking great, right? Um, so that was Halloween, right? Surprise Ninja Turtle Halloween. Actually, I saw fucking Peter Laird, like, saw the original art. Um, IDW is down there, who now publishes the Ninja Turtles comics and all the Transformers comics and all that shit. It's, um, it's really cool. I had, like, no idea. I sort of forget every once in a while that San Diego is, like, a happening place with happening things. Um, I think the Ninja Turtles exhibit is over. They're doing some Star Wars thing now, maybe... I don't know, look it up. Um, San Diego Comic Art Gallery. If you Google that, it'll bring you somewhere. Maybe I'll link to it and not be an asshole. So that brings us to today and sort of where we're at today. Um, there are new Ninja Turtle figures. I did buy them. I bought the full set. Um, these are like just the basic turtles. Uh, there's cartoony looking ones, which are awful. And then there are these. These look more sort of a blend of this and the original Ninja Turtle figures. These are still made by Playmates. Um, shockingly, this is a fucking excellent figure. It's like full of posability. Now the non-Turtle figures are kind of five points. It's like arms, legs, head. And that's it. That's all you're gonna get. Hyper articulated, close to hyper articulated, I pulled out my metal head, which is at work, not articulated at all. They look fucking great, though. And these, if you want just turtles, get these fuckers. Because one, they're made by Playmates, so they're like rough as shit. I could throw this against the wall, and they're really well done, right? So the other day, I'm uh, in the store, and I saw a Turtles in Space 5-pack. And it's the four turtles, and they all have spacesuits, and it's under the Dimension X heading. And they have a motherfucking fugitoid. And I was like, holy shit. And it's a vat chrome fugitoid, which, like, I'm not going to spend 50 bucks to get the four turtles in space. Um, this is fugitoid, your friendly Professor Honeycutt. Um, so uh, they do have an individual carded one, which I have one, but it's just not in my possession yet. Um, the homegirl, Aileen, got it for me. I've been on the look. Um, so fucking thanks to Aileen. And, uh, you know, I've just been kind of, like, doing the Toy Hunter thing, which is kind of weird. I mean, like, I, I, I've always kind of done that, but it's nice to have, like, a specific thing you're looking for where you're like, I'm on the hunt, and um, now I don't necessarily have to be because they, they have a new Triceraton figure, which I totally want, but it's a Walmart exclusive. And I don't really want to go to Walmart. So, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll buy it on the Internet. It's one of those things, like, do I really need more toys that aren't part of this? Um, so, yeah. So, that brings me to yesterday. Well, well, well this the time thing, don't worry about it. But yesterday I went to Frank and Sons. Um, if you're in L.A. and you're at all into toys, Google Frank and Sons. It's in the city of industry. I didn't know this was a thing until fucking four months ago. It's a twice a week, basically a convention. It's like a permanent convention with permanent vendors. But there's fucking like a hundred vendors, and they're all toys. And it's crazy. It's every Wednesday and Saturday. Um, so the homie Jeff and I went out yesterday for the first time, and it was fucking phenomenal. Like, it was everything I could have wanted it to be. Um, it, was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. So go check out Frank and Sons. 
Um, especially if like you're so my my thing recently is buying shit from my childhood. Um, I bought this Pretender Transformer, which is great. And uh, I'm looking at buying some of the older Ninja Turtles figures, like the original Triceraton, um, which I was looking for yesterday, but I couldn't find one in a good condition, but I found a bunch of other shit. I bought a bunch of Transformers. They were fucking dirt cheap. It was great. Um, so go there. It's cool. Check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. I gotta stop saying um so much on this shit. I'm sorry. That's just my verbal pause. Everybody has one. At least it's not like full on ass fuck Tourette's or something. So go to Frankenstein's. Go check it out. Uh, huge shout out to Jeff. Like, I didn't think we were gonna go at all. Like, I just thought holidays and like all this shit. He was like, no, I'm on a mission. I gotta buy some shit for my kid. So Zach, you don't watch this podcast. Little Zach, not Clap Saddle. You're in for some good shit. Christmas is gonna be good this year. Uh, but before that, the last time I hung out with Jeff, he gave me something. He gave me this head. This is... Raphael underwater. Um, and I added the torso and the legs and whatnot in the shell. So this is my sort of like, you know, space pilot Raph. And this keyed into a bunch of things. So a lot of shit was happening in my life. I'd just done the whole Halloween Ninja Turtle experience. Really getting back into these toys from the olden days, like the Exo Squad. Jeff gave me a fucking like cyberpunk driver Raph figure. So I built something. I built this dude. This is my Mecha Ninja Turtle. It's a giant mech suit. It's articulated. Um, it's not the greatest articulation. It's got laser cannons up here. And he does have uh, the traditional size. I'll show you the size here in a second. Put this down. Um, and it's not the traditional size because it's a laser size with blades of lasers. And he can hold them. We'll, uh, we'll see if I can do this without fucking it up too bad on camera. So he can hold them like so. So there you go. He's got a laser sigh. Try not to break it too much. Make it look halfway decent. And uh, there you go. Wah! Laser sigh. Um, I really did this because Exo Squad and this Ninja Turtle fig. And I, I started thinking more and more about you know, all this sort of like old school Ninja Turtle stuff. So there's a, a cockpit in here. Um, I'm taking the back off because when I stick this dude in here, it's really a pain in the ass to try to do it just from the front. Uh, so it kind of helps if I can jam my, my one hand back here. And it's not going to cooperate. Live. Uncut. Unedited. Unprofessional. Um, yeah, yeah. He will fit in here. You're just going to have to look at me monkey with this for a second. Hey, there he goes. All right. So, see there's a little cockpit action in there. He's got a little heads-up display and some joystick action and whatnot. So we'll, we'll enclose our, our little buddy Raphael back in there. In the back of this shell, um, you can see it's open. So you can see the little dude in there. I did try to illuminate it. Um, but the, the illumination kind of sucks. So there's a light, and I can plug this light in here. And, uh, yeah, so it's, it's all right. It works okay. And then, you know, he's got the laser size. But the number one thing, when I first conceived this, that I wanted to build, was a play feature. Because when I was a kid, and I had the old school Ninja Turtles, my dad bought me this thing, and it was a tank. It was a pizza oven tank. It had a bunch of discs that were in a thing, and you just turned it on. It was just like a one-switch motorized thing, so it would just shoot these pizza discs down out of a pizza oven. So in his belt, Pizza Rama, bitches, and Pizza Rama can shoot pizzas out of there. Um, and it flew on the other side of the table. I guess I'll show you it's a pizza. Fuck. Try not to knock over a bunch of shit. Or yell in the microphone. Um, so yeah, there's a pizza. It goes in there. It's kind of like a two-stage thing. So you can, you can have it stick all the way out like that or partially. When you can have it all the way in. You can sort of like click through and kabow! Um, so yeah, fucking Ninja Turtles in space. And Robot Ninja Turtles. 
I have been thinking about building more of these because I could build all four. Um, the problem is the parts and the time and whatnot, but maybe I'll do it. I did buy this dude yesterday. This is uh, Donnie with the goggles. So he might, he might have to pilot an equally as cool Ninja Turtle mech. Um, so yeah, I mean, I guess there's not a whole lot to talk about this. It's a mech. I'll take some photos. I'll post them up. Um, it's got click hinges. I really like the feet. Everybody seems to really like the toe action, which is cool. Um, he does have a double elbow, but because it's got this sort of, you know, whatnot, floaty deal, it kind of limits it a ton. And when I say a ton, it literally means a ton. Um, but he can bend. If it wasn't there, it can go all the way up, which is cool. It's the, the Soren design. All of my mecha shit's basically stolen from Soren. Um, it's got the belt. It's got the shell. I was going to have, like, pop-out lasers from the hands and, like, a big missile thing that came off the back of the shell. But once I put these on, I felt like that was enough. Like, he, he looks sort of predatory, which is cool. Um, he does look more cooler when he's holding his weapons and whatnot. So there you go. There's, a uh, fucking Raphael piloting a giant Mecha Raphael. And, uh, Cowabunga, bitches. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Ninja Turtles. So, um, yeah, I guess this is, uh, a little shorter than the, the old G ones. Maybe I'm just getting better at not rambling as much during some of this shit. I don't know. Who knows? Um, so two things before I go. Um, just fucking shout outs again to Aileen and Jeff for the, the always cool LA support. Um, shout out to my neighbor Krista for coining a term that is now immortalized in my life. So the other day I came home, I'll talk about some official Lego, and I bought a poly bag. It's a cool poly bag. I'll talk about the poly bag itself. But having kind of a shitty day at work. I came home a little late, and I was a little grumpy, and Chris was always in my house. Wanting to fucking talk about shit. Like, God damn it. Open up a beer at my table over here. Girls are having the girl time deal. And I open up my little poly bag, and Krista looks over at me, and she goes, that's really cute. That's a cute little fun pack. Where'd you get that from? Um, and I fucking died a little inside. <laughs> um, so these are fun packs now. This is the fun pack. Um, this is the Ninjago fun pack. This is the Cowler Dragon. Uh, I have a built one. I got a bunch of these because I know a bunch of people in the Lego, and these are cheap, cool holiday gifts you can fucking throw at somebody from across the room. And um, this one is the Cowler Dragon. It's pretty cool. It's from the new Ninjago line. It's got purple hat which is pretty cool. Uh, clear head, clear legs. The The face printing is not that great. Um, you can't even see the face printing on this dude. Uh, maybe. There you go. Uh, it does have a bunch of swords, which obviously were really convenient for me when I was building a laser psi. Um, it's okay. Like, it's, it's not bad. It's four bucks. For this, these are in the, the Christmas section in Target. It's 45 parts, so it's actually a really good deal, and you get decent parts. My issue is, and I know we've talked about this color on the podcast, but we haven't talked about, this is not actually fucking glow-in-the-dark, which is so whack, because it looks glow-in-the-dark as fuck. Like, right now, even on camera, this looks glow-in-the-dark, but it's not. It doesn't glow under UV light, doesn't glow at all. All the packaging images look like it glows. Look at this shit. Okay, so here is some fucking glowing lightning shit coming off of here. And this all looks to be glowing, but it's not. So I feel like there's a little bit of deceptive marketing there. Um, I'll get over it. I'm an adult. I still think it's a cool looking color. But I thought this was the coolest looking color because I thought this was like the new glow in the dark jam. Whatever. It's not. Um, so anyway, go get yourself some fun packs, eat some fucking pizza, cowabunga, Ninja Turtles. Um, I guess this is episode 17. Thank you guys again for watching, and uh, I'll hit you up next time. Peace.